Okay. Hello, everybody. Let's see. I thought I might have a quick chat about NATO Division Commander and just what that's kind of leading me to think about some war games in general. And so this might be a little bit of a ramble and it may go for more than five or ten minutes. Uh, I don't know. Nano Division Commander is one of those interesting games that came about in a time when the uh, wargaming industry was trying to model uh, real-time events, or not real-time events, but current events. And so it it's one of those games that popped up where you found your... Whoa, sorry about that. Where you found yourself in a situation that, where you're trying to design uh, games that uh, you know, might actually be actual reality at some point. And I think that, let me just turn the music off, and I think that, uh, I think that kind of drove some innovation uh, because A, it was hypothetical, so you could postulate a little bit and be a little bit more creative and you weren't uh, bound by history so much. Uh, but you did have to account for uh, current capabilities and things like that. So. For some reason, NDC never really took off that I know of, uh, and I think it, primarily because much of the game rules were written and designed to be played two-player, but the final package that came was really a player uh, versus controller setup. You had two sets of counters, two maps, uh, a dividing screen, and it really led you down the path that, hey, this is really what you should be doing. You should be trying to play play the game that way but the player versus controller rules were very very brief and I think uh, I think that game kind of got sold short there on the value that is in the game there's a lot of really cool design elements in that game that uh, that despite badly ergonomically created charts and tables and you're constantly flipping through charts and tables looking for tables uh, and you're also fiddling with all these little uh, combat support point uh, aspects of the game as well that, that kind of crowd the map and make things look kind of fugly uh, I think I think the game in itself in of itself has a lot of merit from that perspective it has a lot of merit uh, I like the intelligence aspect of the game so you put sectors uh, across the, the map and uh, along with the hex grid and you're searching sectors and you're building levels of intelligence within a sector and you're building uh, levels of intelligence uh, against particular units that you're fighting against. And that uh, intelligence is going to have an impact upon your ability to wage war against those enemy combatants. So I like that aspect of the game. Even though the rules are a little clunkily worded, I think they work relatively well. They are fiddly and you do need to constantly be doing some searching but once the NATO forces get to a certain level they've pretty much got a dominant intelligence on most units so you're in good shape and you don't have to waste as much time there whereas the Soviets are constantly trying to work out who's who and what's what and uh, really only know what's going on in key segments of the, of the map <clears throat> which in turn if you're playing opposed drives some strategy choices and tactical choices. I also like the fatigue, the aspects of fatigue. It shows the gradual wear down, or in fact, the rapid wear down of uh, modern combat uh, units, both mechanically and physically. You can see that over an eight, 16, 24 hour period of time, that if you're constantly moving and fighting, you are going to uh, lose your cohesiveness. It's really a, a, a re representation of ancient warfare's cohesiveness concepts, morale concepts, I think. Uh, that's pretty well done. Uh, so it's impacting the DRMs or the uh, the shifts on the combat tables uh, based on fatigue, which, of course, get netted out at both sides. So each side's intel and each side's fatigue net each other out. So it makes it makes for an interesting game. Uh, <clears throat> you have these uh, different types of modes that you can be in. So you can be uh, in a prepared attack or a deliberate attack or a hasty attack or administrative movement or tactical movement or double zone or triple zone. 
uh, those types of movement, uh, relief and insert mode, uh, those types of movement and behavior are going to give you different profiles for uh, attack and defense and for movement rates. And uh, in fact, uh, intelligence value as well. So how easy are you to spot? That Those all play into the game as well. So. I like. I really like that. I like the way the uh, I like the way the combat is a function of movement. So you want to attack. It's ten movement points or five movement points or whatever it is. So uh, the challenge, I think, so this system comes together really nicely, and it was innovative for its time. Yet it didn't really go very much further. Uh, the next war used the same system, or was the was the uh, the original system there. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there, but it seems like that that system could have gone on to a third generation and really had some some merit uh, and some value uh, for newer SBI titles or combat titles. So I think we kind of missed missed an opportunity there as gamers to see something uh, additional come out of the the designer's mind there. And I think it's a Dunnigan title, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure. But a uh, real fascinating game. And <clears throat> I think at the beginning of this video, I had some uh, point I wanted to make about that. And I've forgotten. So there you go. Uh, so overall, I would say uh, Nano Division Commander is one of those titles where you should absolutely try and play it. Uh, you know, get the get the flat tray version of it for not too much money and bust it out and play it uh, enjoy it you can um, you can potentially try playing it as a controller that's also a lot of fun but it's quite a bit of planning work for the controller to kind of map out what they're going to do and how they're going to do it before they sit down to play with the opponent so I'd encourage them, that person to do the homework before you get started, otherwise you're going to be sitting there for an hour waiting for your, your buddy to write down all the rules and instructions for his forces. Um, let's see, what else was there? Yeah, I think the the, the point I, I was going to make, uh, now that I've paused and thought about it, is after playing NDC, which is a 20-some what's 79, 89, 20, 30 some year old game and playing a more modern block games in the same two week period, it really strikes me that you know, innovation has occurred all along our spectrum of gaming life cycles as we've, we've played these games. It's, uh, you know, there's the guys that are out there that are trying to do different things and be creative. I think we we often get caught up and stuck in this desire to be playing the same system and the same game all the time. And I think we miss out when we do that. I, for one, certainly love OCS and TCS and the lock and load system and, you know, um, SCS to a certain extent and, you know, many other systems. You know, Zucker's uh, Napoleonic system has lots of fans and... There are other Napoleonic systems, uh, uh, La Pate and all that sort of stuff. Uh, ASL, we play all these systems and we buy all the modules in those systems and we play those games so that we can master them or manage them better or shorten our learning cycles. Then you get these outliers like uh, NDC and uh, uh, Air and Armor is another game that I would say is an outlier there where it was kind of a one-off system that's really interesting. Uh, Vento Nuovo has this Waterloo 200 block system uh, that's uh, somewhat unique, I believe. And uh, now they've adapted that to World War One with uh, uh, Germany at war. Those games are really valuable to us and we should be honoring them a little more by A, buying them and B, playing them. It was great to see Michael, who had just purchased this mint copy in the big soap box uh, of uh, NATO Division Commander and bust that sucker out and we just punch that little baby and put those maps out and everything was pristine, perfect, gorgeous and we had a great time with it. And that's what games are for, right? But 
you know, he probably never would have played that game if we hadn't got together face to face and played it and took the time to read the rules and kind of go through it. So I really encourage you to not get set in your ways and don't, you know, <laughs> sometimes I get a, a little frustrated with folks that, that uh, you know, harp on about the old days and how fantastic the old days were and they only play SBI games or they only play Avalon Hill games. I mean, for God's sake, people, there are great SBI games that use pretty much the same system with different color counters and a different map. And it's, yes, it's a Simon, Simonson map, so it must be fantastic. Okay, I got it. It was a great time. But there are other games in from that era that aren't popular that maybe we should try and see what we get out of them. And we should also give new games and new systems a chance too. I think there's lots of innovation coming along. Look at um, look at uh, Dean Essex's uh, Battalion Command System or Combat System, whatever it's going to be called, the, the Bulge game. People are like, oh, I don't need to play any more Bulge games. I've played all the Bulge games and uh, Arden 44 is the best ever or Bitterwoods is the best ever and I don't need anything else. Got it. Okay, good. How about you just lighten the freaking hell up a little bit and go grab a different game, buy a new game, try it out, and see if you like it. Because I think I think we'll be pleasantly surprised. I have been pleasantly surprised playing uh, NATO Division Commander Opposed. Just how much fun it was. It reaffirmed my the value I get out of the game playing solo. Uh, <clears throat> in that play by poll session that I ran on my on the blog and uh, and and it and I was you know really pleasantly uh, not surprised but was pleasantly engaged with Waterloo 200 and uh, Battle for Germany they were fun experiences with novel mechanics and novel ideas and interesting mecha- um, interesting systems that that deserve to be uh explored by us and experienced so that so you know we can take an experience away and then go hey you know that was actually really cool and it makes me think about my other games i'm playing the other ga- other systems that i have and it makes me think uh maybe i can appreciate them even more or i can look at ways i can tweak them or hack them or do something different with them i don't know i just think we get uh we don't want to get stuck in our uh in our groove as we all migrate down the path of becoming old mothers right we need to uh we need to keep a little zest about us and uh, and and try these new systems and, and not be afraid of them and and don't judge them too harshly that's i find myself being harder on games that are churning out the same bs over and over again and slapping a different colored map on it and different color blocks to me or or counters or whatever it may be right to me that is lazy design uh, uh you know crappy crappy weak efforts you know, that that i think we could do we could just do better at um uh, revolution games is another company that is trying to do cool things and i think uh i think one step uh one small step games is also trying to do some different things as well so as those companies bring out titles if they're priced right and uh they play okay we should be giving them a shout out you know that uh, the Gazala title from um, from Revolution Games and even the Siege of Ball Gun uh, is interesting and a, and different, but it's probably a little too much like Storm the Storm Over series for me to, to really say that it's uh, it's innovative by any any you know fair measure I would suppose. So. That's all I had to say. Really not a whole lot. I just encourage you to try new systems and play new games and, and uh, get more games to the table, right? You you will regret it if on your deathbed you receive total consciousness and realize that, ha, I should have played that game later.